the last episode, William and Sebastian explained how to create a pull request and left us on a cliffhanger. So whatever happened to that pull request? Well, let's find out together in this story about collaboration, teamwork, and making open source contributions. So I see that there's a pull request and I'm going to check it out. And I see that it's by Sebastian and I'm going to click on his have fun with code message. And I'm going to look at his changes and see what he did. Maybe um, I actually think that this is not a correct change and I'm going to actually suggest a change for him. You can do this on the command line by pulling the branch and checking it out, but you can also use the UI. So this is a little trick I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna click on this little plus button here. So I click on plus, and then I'm gonna click on this little plus minus little guy here, and I see his code. So I'm gonna make a suggestion saying, you know what, also, you should multiply by five as well. And then I'm gonna add the single comment. That's it. Now Sebastian can have my comment, and if I go back to the pull request here, he sees that I made a suggestion. And I'm going to generally add a comment to why I did that, right? So I'm gonna say, hey, thanks for the pull request. I think we should also multiply by five. And then I'm going to press comments, and now he's going to be able to see that comment. Oh, I can see your message now. So yeah, thanks for, for the suggestion. It's, I think, the right thing to do here. But I just see uh, you want me to multiply it by five. And I feel like this line is getting a little bit cluttered. How about summarizing this all into just 30, right? So we can say two times three times five is 30. Let's leave William a comment here and see what he thinks. And I can see that there is now a new comment. I agree, that's a better suggestion. So I'm just gonna leave a quick comment. That sounds great, go for it. And you can see that uh, GitHub is an incredibly rich uh, interface that lets you not only yeah, upload your code and uh, track your code, it is also allowing you to have this conversation and figure out issues and also refactoring your code. And yeah, getting suggestions, getting comments, getting feedback to build better code together. So let me just make this change and uh, submit this as a commit and uh, see what William thinks. So again, I go to my code editor. I use the one on the command line just for efficiency. So we just decided that we are going to change this to 30. So let me make this change. And then uh, after this, we go through the yeah, regular procedure again, the three steps, git add, git commit, and git push. So let me do this. So git add, so I can add all the changes, make a commitment, <laughs> git commit times 30, and then we push the changes back to GitHub. Git push origin new. And now when I review, I can now see that there's a new commit here. I agree with the changes, I like the code. Let's go ahead and merge it back into the master branch. Now, usually you don't wanna merge a bunch of commits like this. You wanna actually do something called squashing, which means that you take all of the commits and you squash them into one commit. Now, there are ways to do this with the Git CLI. I always kind of just use GitHub. If you click merge pull request, it's going to merge all of the commits. So it's not going to look cohesive because now I'm gonna see two commits where the three was added and then 30. So it doesn't really tell me the full story. I actually wanna squash this into one so I can see that the whole change was just 30. So we can change this and say squash and merge instead. And then I'm gonna press enter, confirm. And it's going to let me kind of rename this, right? So. I can say the commit is now just going to be times 30 instead, right? So this is going to be the final commit message. I say confirm, squash, and merge, and that's it. And again, I'm a branch freak, so I'm going to also delete the branch. And I go back to my master branch, and I see that the commit was there. I can see that there are five commits, and the latest one only has one commit now because we squashed the other intermediate commits. And now when I look at it, I see that the only change was 30. So this is nice, it keeps your history clean, and it makes coming back and verifying what you did a breeze. That's it, that's what it takes to collaborate. There are many other advanced versions of this, but this gets you pretty far. I think you can do a lot with just this workflow. It seems overkill if it's just you, but I promise you, as soon as you start working with other people, it's going to be a life changer. I hope you had fun, you had fun with Git. And uh, in this lesson, yeah, we learned how to collaborate and we will do this more often from now on, I guess. We're gonna let you get back to your work. Sorry.